Hi, this is Randy Randall of No Age and host of the podcast Hyphen It with Randy Randall. I want to welcome our newest sponsor of the show, DistroKid. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms and artists keep 100% of their royalties. Hyphenate listeners get 30% off at distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. Again, that's distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash H-Y-P-H-E-N-A-T-E. Go get your music streaming everywhere now. It's Monday morning. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Mr. Aaron Farley. How are you doing this morning, Mr. Aaron Farley? Um, I am doing well. Like I said, I'm a little <laughs> under the weather. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. actually in the weather. We, we oh. are in the clouds right now. So I didn't know what you meant like, when you said you were in the clouds. I mean, so you're physically and, and health-wise? I'm physically watching the clouds go through my backyard. Oh, my God. That's how it's like li- living in the Mile High City. How yeah. many miles? Hi, yeah, literally. You? Yeah, we're yeah. 50. Uh, our house is at 5,400 feet, I think. 53. Uh, I don't, I, I'm so, so ashamed. I don't know how many feet are in a mile. 5,500. Oh, my God. So you're like 100 feet shy of a mile? Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty close. <laughs> the mile, like right where you turn, right where you turn off the highway to come into Lake Arrowhead, I think right there is a mile. So it's like oh, okay. 5,500. And then it drops down as you get into town. Yeah, a couple hundred feet. We're on the low side of town. Okay. Ooh, is, that, is there a difference? Yeah. Is there a class distinction? The low side, the high side? Not a class distinction, but there is a weather distinction. Oh, I we see. Are on the warm, we're on the warm side. Oh my God. So Microclimates. We'll, yeah, so it's we'll get um, like we'll get like three inches of snow at our house. And then two miles away, they'll get like a foot. That's wild. Yeah. It'll be colder. They get all the snow first. And it's also, I think, like at the, there's parts of the area that are almost 6,000 feet. Wow. Like pretty close to us. So, so they get all the snow first. All the snow drops on them first, and then we get the remnants. Wow. And then we get the warm air that comes up from Hesperia, from the desert. Oh, like, right. Just like a mile from our house, it kind of drops down and starts going into the desert. So that's where, that's where we, we drove around that one time, right? Where you kind of, yeah. comes rocks. You don't really think of it. It doesn't look like exactly. pine, alpine forest. No, mountains. it looks like it Joshua looks tree. High kinda. desert. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. And then, so that, so we're kind of in the pine trees forest area. And then you go right down there a couple miles away and that's where all the warm air comes up. So you'll see like the cold air comes from one side. So all the weather comes from <laughs> the right side of our house. And then all the warm air comes from the left side of our house, and you can see sometimes <laughs> right where on the top clouds. Of you. Yeah, pretty much like a mile north of us, the clouds you can see will just stop. Sometimes they'll just be a wall, <laughs> and you can see blue sky on one side, and we'll have snow on our at our house. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it's I think it's magicians. I think it's some Harry Potter shit. It's it's definitely. Like, no. This wall yeah. of clouds stays here. I got my yeah. this is Spiritu Santo over here, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. We also Pl- yeah. Plurbesi Plorum is happening over here. Yeah, we also <laughs> r- yeah we run into Gandalf often. Right, a wizard walks by. <laughs> God, the oh, amount incredible. the amount of amazing um, songs about like wizards and. <laughs> Oh. And witches, and oh I, I want those. I want those times back, right? Well, yeah, I want why, all I, the songs, like like mainstream songs. That's it on and, the radio to be about like wizards and warlocks and running <laughs> through the fields and <laughs> well, California the new Taylor Dream album just came and, out. I heard it has like forty five songs on it, oh, so yeah. at least like ten of those have to be about like wizards and fairies and something they have on to be, it, doesn't it? There's one thing about Taylor Swift. She has a uh her output is maybe unmatched she puts, a songs, lot, she puts out a lot she puts yeah. out a lot of music yeah, and you, you know, know what's incredible is somehow i've missed i'd say 99 percent of it i know it. none of I'm it just, I'm, I'm out of i'm out of the market uh area yeah i was it. definitely too 
old when mm. she started to like, you know, I was not, I was not enjoying like Katy Perry or, or Miley mm-hmm. Cyrus or any of that stuff anyway. That's not really necessarily on my radar, but then it's, it's like a weird, um, it's like country, but it's not country. I guess she started mm. as country, right? Like it was this, she started as know. like the young country singer. That sounds like, I, I would pop. believe that. Yeah. If you told me she the, was from Scandinavia, I'd believe that too. That she yeah, won think, Top of the Pops in Sweden <laughs> in 1995 as like, a, wow, a two year old. That would yeah. be like, oh, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah okay. That yeah, sounds perfect. Like, she's she very was talented. On a TV show. And, mm-hmm. yeah. but she, but, she was not a Disney kid, right? No. Mm-mm. Okay. But there's but other people th- who were. But I think yeah. what's interesting is that everything, you know, a lot of people listening to country up here mm-hmm. and people that love country. Like Taylor Swift is the pop star that you can that you can like. Like even like families wow. love Taylor Swift. Like they listen, you know, and it's like that country vibe. I guess I don't know. I she's don't know. done. She's I'm, done I'm, something I'm, that that nobody else in in America can do right now. She somehow like brought like a, a right left sort of Venn yeah. diagram together of like you said country listening families and I think more left. You know. People, yeah. you know, it's kind of can can enjoy it too. She seems to have that kind of just general, you know, centrist pop appeal. She's making, yeah, she's making like poppy, like personal songs, and hmm. she's a little. She's got a little bit of a Dolly Parton vibe in that way, where like people on the right, like like kind of, even though people do like right leaning people do not enjoy her political views, but they, <laughs> they, they look the she's other just, way because they like the music. That doesn't she, happen very often. I don't think. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like two men in our forties d- discussing Taylor Swift. It's, I mean, we should do a go full, and... f- full side podcast, <laughs> exploring the music of Taylor Swift yeah. from two people who can't, newcomers really like hey like yeah. well you see those videos like this is the first time somebody heard nirvana first yeah. time somebody heard this like we probably could <laughs> totally. put on taylor swift the first You're time like, we ever heard okay so okay. like yeah no shit dumbass that's like a 40 billion stream <laughs> song you're like yeah. is that good is yeah. that is it our earn all streams song streamed that much like she doesn't make any money from any of the streams does she like well she's the one person that makes money she's the whole yeah. only the one person the system works for like well, oh she's, okay so, yes yeah, well she's it's, it's she dropped off taylor swift what like last year she dropped off spotify oh is that right, right? she's she not was on like, spotify no she there's a second half to this story oh shit okay so she but she did drop off spotify like a year ago and everybody was freaking out and i'm sure spotify was just like uh, uh okay wait a second. so we still have drake though right <laughs> are we, we still, still have joe like, rogan okay we're good yeah everyone else but um but then she magically like Wizard. signed back up on Wizard to got involved. spotify yeah uh like a couple weeks ago like Mm. popped up on my New York times, like Taylor Swift is back on Spotify. And then, you know, days later, her secret album came out. So I'm sure she has a great deal with Spotify. I would, I would, I would imagine a great personal deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of Taylor Swift and Spotify, uh, uh, Nate Denver, Denver. hell of of an episode, right? Yeah. Amazing. Speaking of music and wizards and, he is kind of a so so. This was my first reaction. A, I knew nothing about Nate Denver; had not heard okay. of him. And then, um, I'd listened to the first little chunk, and then I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go listen to some music." So then I listened to Nate Denver's Neck, which mm-hmm. was there's like six songs maybe on Spotify. I don't know. There okay. were there were not very many, and it. I was like, wait, this is this guy's music? I didn't know what to expect at all. Because he's such kind of like a fun-loving, serious firefighter, but used to be a writer, and he's a fan of Slayer. But he goes to church, and he's like, like, he just has all of these things. Yeah. And then I listened to that music, and I was like, wow, I did not expect this. It's It's like like a a baritone, folk, gothic kind of horror yeah, but, that, but but mixed with like the f- like funniness, funny 
lightness of like pavement. Yeah, that's a like good way has that yeah. like I'm like wait is this serious? Oh wait no it's not serious. Wait, is it serious? <laughs> it's kind of serious. Kind of serious. Yeah. It's kind of it's funny. Is he a comedic writer? I wait. What is this? And then it reminded me of um oh shoot who's who's the guy that owned K Records? Oh Calvin Johnson. Yeah. yeah. What was his band? Uh, the, Beat Happening. Yeah. Or Dub Narcotic. Was that the one? Man, the one with like, super low voice where he's like, oh, oh, oh. yo, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. And the Halo Beat Benders happening. is the one. He Halo did Benders. With, uh, That's what yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Halo That's... Benders. And I was like, oh, this has like weird Halo Benders vibes mixed with like, it just was so different than I thought it was going to be. And then I had to look up the Slayer song, which is not on Spotify, but it was on YouTube. Oh my God. Which I don't understand how YouTube works because everything you can't find that people don't stream or has no licensing agreement to stream, it's all on YouTube mm-hmm. with the licenses and stuff. Do you know how this works? I think there's there. No, as a, the, as a musician, the like yours, no. I'm sure no. every single no age song is up on YouTube Probably. singles or full albums, I th- but it's, but it yeah. all goes to you. Like you guys still get, no, we streaming get stuff. No, we can oh, okay. as a band. I don't know. Maybe a record label does. Maybe the record a label probably does. publisher does. But by the time you haven't whatever, found those pennies, whatever gets they to just us, throw pennies at they throw pennies at your house every time they drive by. Maybe, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, that's not. You know, we will get a record company check, or we will get a, a publishing yeah. company check. Yeah. My awareness or the ease of understanding which one is a, which a one? YouTube thing and which one yeah. is a uh, Spotify thing or which one is a thing. It you know. I would within about ten minutes I probably could figure that out, but it's yeah. all like you said, pennies on the you know. It's not the, enough out of a thirteen dollar check to see the like three hundred companies to yeah. scroll the three hundred lines of where how you break yeah. thirteen dollars into three hundred parts. Yeah, it starts to becomes yeah. a, a needle meat haystack. It's like why <laughs> why are we doing this? <laughs> I've, I've already lost money. Now you want my time to figure out how I lost money? Well, know. anyway, Nate Denver's yeah. love of it's Slayer great. song is on YouTube if you want to go listen oh to it. Oh, my God. He's so cool. I feel like he was synonymous with Slayer for me just because of his interview in Slap. And I feel like there was so much, you know, that would come up about that or he would kind of reference it in other, other interviews and like that, you know, his Jeff, ha- Jeff Heineman uh, interview. And it's, I don't know, you know, as somebody out, uh, who kind of outside of a, the, uh, a major metal zone too. I mean, I mean, I'm not a big metal head, but I can yeah. appreciate um, Rain and Blood and you know, this is sort of the general place that Slayer occupies in that world. Yeah. It's, uh, it's cool. And kind of coming I mean, from a skateboard crossover sort of world. I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. I get this. Totally. Well, and, and he seems like one of those guys is, it's a little bit, um, he seemed like when he was telling stories that he was just happy to be going along with life and getting into things yeah <laughs> like one of those like a very forest gumpy in kind of existence like, yeah like when he would talk uh, like well then you know i just was like decided to write a story or a, a album review and i sent it to slap and they they published it which happens that's like that's the, actually the, a lot of people that i know that's how they got started in the nineties of like, I guess I should just send a photo into Thrasher and then it got published and you're like, and they're like, Whoa, Whoa, wait, this, you can just, this is how it works. <laughs> and I feel like the majority of people that don't do that don't make it because they just didn't realize that it wasn't quite as hard as you th- thought it would be. Like yeah. all those people are just looking for like, Oh, this kid shot photos in Idaho of some kids hitting a rail. Yeah, we'll put that in the back of yeah. Sure. We'll put that in yeah. the little like like locals photos or whatever. Yeah. But that he was that way and, and then and then all of a sudden he's like in New York writing. I was like, Yeah, you know, and then I'm interviewing Slayer and then I'm interviewing this person and then I'm writing for this and I'm right I'm like, Oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> I like this. I like yeah. those guys. To say yes to life, you know what I mean? I'm young, what what do I have to lose? Like, you know, kinda of hit yeah. the ground running and just keep keep saying yes to everything and then stuff happens I yeah, love the, yeah i love those stories too and but you can tell it with his personality like i'm i'm sure he's always been like that i don't know but that 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 like uh i don't know what is what, how would you explain his personality kind of like because it's definitely not dumb luck he's very driven and smart rare. yeah but like his 
personality comes across as like super calm and like, Hey man, how are you? Like mm-hmm. that guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think it's, you know, I think there's a quiet reserve there. You okay. Know? Yeah. You, one could say, I don't yeah. know, you know, where it's just like, yeah, he does a lot, but I think he's, I think he's worked a lot on himself. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that's, that's, that's a sign of somebody who's done a lot of interior work. You know, there's a, there's yeah. an, there's an interior architecture in place of some people that yeah. has come hard, hard won, hard fought and yeah. won. You know what I mean? And I think I've, you know, I'm pretty open about my sobriety now, you know, whatever, however many years it is, 14 yeah. years. Um, and you meet people like that too. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, some people are, are, a, little, are a little bit lighter with life and can, can blow on the, on the wind, like a dandelion. And other yeah. people just have this, like, I work. I work at this every day and I'm happy, but it does not come without work or I've done a lot of work in order to be able to sit here yeah. calmly with people. Yeah. And I yeah. think there's, and I don't necessarily have a, have a line on what, where Nate's with, you know, where he's at in that, on that journey. But I just think that, you know, you, you get the sense like, this is a good guy. This is, yeah. this is, you know what I mean? But it's also, he's, he's in, he can be intense or he could be like, wow. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, totally. as, as a dad, as, as, you know, you meet other dads sometimes and, and kid functions you're like all right hey <laughs> like yeah you don't always you know, you're put, put around a lot of other people sometimes and like okay well what's, what's going on and you try to find your commonality and just go okay sounds good yeah yeah totally and i think it comes across with him in the interview because uh i feel like anybody that can tell really amazing stories and it doesn't sound like they're bragging mm. is like a good 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 uh barometer to try yeah. to achieve <laughs> like, yeah. because I'd never, you know, you get the people like, well, then I was at blah, blah, blah's house and da, 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 da. And then, and you're like, okay, yeah, I get it. Okay. Yep. Name dropping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds amazing. But then all of his stories had some kind of element of that, but it was a very like, I don't know, important part of the story or whatever. I don't know. He just, yeah. he just definitely was not bragging. He was like excited about his <laughs> past and one and was like no can you believe this happened it was crazy this is yeah like, well, we ended up at too. this place yeah. and then like this happened can you believe it i'm like oh my god i can't believe i'm here what am i doing yeah like i love those on, stories being on the same footing with it with your audience like hey you and me yeah. we're the same we're in the, we're the, you know you're the audience yeah. but i'm gonna tell a story i can't believe this happened to me like i want to yeah. tell you what happened and it was nuts yeah. like not like, i got to go oh, behind I'm, the curtain yeah like <laughs> not like oh i'm better than you so let me tell you what it's like over here on this side of things yeah. it's like no i'm just like you this, i was shitting my pants but this happened, how cool is this thing i was about to go do this thing and it was nuts yeah, yeah. no i love i love that no and I, and I think you know nate is somebody that I've, i don't know super well but like i said I've, i you know i think it comes across in, in the interview i hope but and then the introduction is i've been a fan you know what i mean it's like well those things yeah. you, you know it's like when certain things enter into your cu- cultural consciousness as a teenager you're just yeah. sort of like you're cool you're cool forever yeah. like you're just you know you're just you're in here yeah is, is what some, is this yeah you, yeah, there's just somebody that's just like, oh, you're the guy of that story I read when I was 14. You're forever <laughs> awesome. That, that yeah. was, I remember thinking how cool that was at the time. And now meeting those people later in life, you're still just like, no, you're the cool guy that stoked out me as a 14 year old. Like, I'm just, this is rad. What else, what else, what else is going on? What else you got? And when I heard that's his so music awesome. and stuff too, it was that kind of thing of like, oh, you're also that same guy. I almost felt like that's almost what it was for me. It's like, is this the same Nate Denver that wrote for Slap? And then I'd see something else like, is this the same Nate? How many Nate Denvers are there? You know, and I think that was, that was the interesting yeah. part of it. And even when he moved down here to LA That's and awesome. became, so you knew him. Team. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, so you knew of him as a writer before you knew yeah. of him as a musician. Through reading so, Slap yeah. magazine. Yeah. And like the interviews and stuff. It's like, yeah. you know, and again, I was obsessive about skate stuff at that age, you know, where I would just be like, you know, I, I knew Atiba, I knew like Mumford, I knew all these like names yeah. of like skateboarders. And or, so, you, so it's like you're cataloging like the skateboarders, the photographers, the writers, the artists, you know, you know, Thomas Campbell, Ed Templeton, all these things, you know, were like just, just tattooed on my brain forever. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, those were my like baseball heroes or, you know, people know names yeah. of like football players or things, you know, it's like, Oh no, I know all these guys. That's amazing. So then when you said, <laughs> so how did you first find his record? I'm trying to think what it must've been. It must've been like at a store or something, or maybe you Dean had it. 
Yeah, maybe as Amoeba, you know, we were, you know, just being there and like finding weird stuff. Cause I think there was a lot of that, especially in the early days of touring, you would just yeah. go to random record stores and like find things. And I almost feel like Dean might have brought it in. And have you and like, have you heard of this guy? I'm like, I think that's the guy that was the writer for the thing. It was something like that. Sounds yeah. reasonable. But it kind of occupied that sort of place, you know, like similar to like Bill Callahan or Smog, you know, it's kind of baritone, yeah. low folky sort of thing. And yeah. we're fans of, of him as well. And that kind of cool sort of outsider folk art sort of thing yeah. or like Bonnie Prince Billy or something, you know. Yeah. A little old. Yeah. Is that oh, your is awesome. that your dog trying to get in? Is he like scratching? No, do you want to see this is my what, cat? What is going on? Yeah. This is my cat trying to get into a box. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know if you could hear that. I saw you like looking at him like oh, oh no. it doesn't reach all the way. He won't stop bothering me. He just wants your attention. He sits here. Yeah, the door's open, everything and yeah. he's like, no, I'm just like I'm trying to open a <laughs> box and he's trying to get the tape off a box i don't know i'm about to kick him out though <laughs> okay. hold on let me move him real quick right. i didn't know it was that loud that's funny. no it was, it was, yeah i can argue something like ticka, 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 ticka. this is great this is all staying in i think yeah our dog is so mellow we have a dog named blossom who is the quietest mellowest dog she goes crazy on walks right. at, at home she's really mellow i was just explaining we have a dog blossom who's very quiet and does nothing. Oh yeah. She's, she's like, I love your dog. I call her over I'm like, Hey, come over here. And she like run outside. <laughs> Not, really? Yeah, almost like similar to a cat. Like, mm, no, I don't want to do, I don't want your attention right now. I'm, just gonna like, go I'm vibing out right now. Yeah. I got a whole other thing I'm doing here, dad. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. We saw a uh, bobcat run through Ooh. the neighbor's yard or slowly walk through the neighbor's yard this morning. <laughs> and so I think it threw the whole animal vibe off. Yeah, everyone can the smell The dog it. is like, keeps cool. going outside and she's mm-hmm. looking. She wants to go chase it. And then the cat was out there sitting up looking and he was all puffed up watching this bobcat walk by. So uh, I, I know our, our, our family of coyotes has, have migrated from one yard, from one neighbor's yard to another neighbor's yard. So, oh, really? So I'm glad they're still there. They kind of went missing for a little while. I thought maybe oh. something had happened. But but they'll do a thing like in the middle of the night where they'll go out and just yip and yowl like the coyotes and run up and down our street. And I yeah. think they're trying to get other dogs or other people to come out and chase them. This is the sense oh, I get. Really? I think like one of them like howls like it's like being bitten, like mm-hmm. it's like being attacked. And the rest mm-hmm. of them sound really mean. But then when you go look at it, you realize, oh, they're all coyotes. I thought like yeah. when I first heard it, I thought like, oh my God, someone's chihuahua is getting like torn apart in the middle of the street. Yeah. And I ran out there and it was just them. I think it was like a ploy, some kind of like way to get the animals riled up and come outside so that they can attack them. Well, I heard, I heard that they do because we have like a bunch of groups of coyotes in the, like in the wash that's right on the other side of our road. And they, mm-hmm. um, I heard that they do roll call. Whoa. So be like at night they do roll call and that's like why they all get each other yipping is that they each group has like a call and then every single one of them has to do their call to sound in. So everyone knows and that, where it's why at. it sounds like there's like hundreds of them, but really <laughs> someone, I just was listening to this, like some coyote guy. Oh. He's like, yeah, they'll call and it'll sound like there's a hundred of them, but it might just be like seven. Oh wow. And the, because they, they'll run up, and do calls from one side to the other and like, and then all the puppies, all the little puppies have to. And so they roll call to make sure that they're all there before they all go to sleep. Wow. I thought that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But they can recognize each person's yip and yell. I guess so. They know I guess so. Like, or like each family group has its own sound or something. I don't know, well, but it gets crazy out here sometimes. And the one time I heard a mountain lion too, which what, like all that. that? Like? like a roar. Yeah, just like a, you know, whatever, like that, whatever you hear in the movies. But that, that, and all the coyotes were going crazy and I was out on the deck. And then I just heard that sound like a mountain lion and the coyotes just shut up. It's silent. And it was kind of like the mountain lion was like, yeah, stop, stop. stop." Shut shut the fuck up. (laughs) Shut up. We're all trying to sleep here. Yeah, we get. Can we it. do this. Do we have the to coyotes. do this every night? Yeah, like every night, guys. Come on, you're all here. It's fine. <laughs> Just brush your teeth. Go to the bathroom. Go to bed. Yeah, you don't need. But this. it was real close. It was like I mean, we've oh. had one. So like our neighbors, I don't know. Maybe once a year, we'll post a photo of there's like a mountain lion that sleeps under their deck sometimes, and then then there's um a like groups of bears that are around, but 
I've only I haven't seen one, but we have had a bear in our uh, in our front door camera in the middle of the Whoa. night twice. Yeah, big like a big huge one, one wow. little one, and then one like big huge like <laughs> you know like back and forth. But that's crazy. Are people in... attacked much? Much? Do you no. hear this? No, I don't think bears really attack people. All right. Or even There's the mountain much... lions or the coyotes or anything. No, everyone just kind of leaves. They leave the mm-hmm. humans alone. There's a lot of space up here. I don't know why. I mean, I think they all. It's basically coming up here for food. I think. No, there's there's. It's most of the time. It's on garbage day. <laughs> it's like Wednesday <laughs> or Thursday, <laughs> when you get most of the animals running around. They'll know. It, there's like so much food. They don't need to attack people. And you <laughs> you see just... people will do videos of like will have their video camera and the bears just like like sauntering down the street. Like it's just like uh, I don't know, I got places well, to go, guys. Yeah. There's another there's a dumpster down here. They're giving away yeah. donuts. They always give out the donuts <laughs> later here. But it's crazy <laughs> though. A lot of them like the bears will hide out because there's so many places here that are like vacation houses that no one checks on. So then the the bears or coyotes will just find houses that there's no people there. And they'll just, just sleep under the deck. So all over here it's like mountain lions and bears and stuff but they're all just sleeping under people's decks <laughs> they must love it not, it's great yeah there's yeah a i mean like why of... not it's probably warmer you buy a house that probably has a heater on yeah oh, wow yeah you know I didn't think it's of that, like yeah. the wall Maybe the leaking, wall would be a little a warmer faucet somewhere over there so just to get some totally. water yeah totally why why be way out in the woods yeah <laughs> and you can be right next to like some some kind of snack packs i feel like some, that's a Turkey that's legs a, or whatever. <laughs> that's a good setting for like a kids animated film. You know, just all the all the wild animals that occupy space when everyone leaves for you know when the when the once the holiday's over, yeah. Whenever, once winter ends and then everyone's like, all right, they're gone. That's our turn. Let's take over this yeah. vacation town, the ski town. When no, it's our town. Yeah. 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 That would See be good. what's all the stuff people drop in the snow and once the snow <laughs> melts, I'm like oh hey, yeah. got another ring, got another watch, <laughs> found a shoe. Yeah, although I think people see as many bears in like Altadena, or even maybe even no. out by you. Do you guys ever yeah. get bears? We don't have bears right here. We'll we'll do yeah. Get we'll, get a, we'll get a bobcat, coyotes mostly, raccoons, skunks, squirrels, you yeah, know, and stuff. But but I know Altadena had like yeah. multiple. They used to have to tag them to make sure that they could keep track of them. But there yeah. were there were a lot of them up not by us, but on both sides of the canyon. Like the it's like the both sides have canyons and the bears would come up there peacocks we had peacocks too. oh yeah peacocks we got the peacocks here you guys have peacocks too yeah so, so, but like, uh, the other side of foothill the, i feel the, like peacocks I mean, are going to take over la a little bit kind of like the parrots did yeah like when we were when we were first in uh atwater it was the first time that we experienced the parrots oh, which God, is probably yeah. like 2008 or something and there mm-hmm. were a couple little groups and by the time we were in altadena there were so many hundreds of thousands of them yeah. yeah and there were so many groups of parrots and they were everywhere they're starting to get all over the city and then yep. even when we first moved to altadena we, we were there for three years and when we first moved there was one little group of um i guess a flock of peacocks <laughs> I, think, I think they're called a, a murder uh, a murder yeah. of crows that's crows. A, a murder of peacocks although yeah. a murder of peacocks <laughs> is better that's a good band name but the, yeah, but I think there were like six, six or seven, like peacocks that would come around. And mm-hmm. by the time the third year, they had had babies multiple times, and you it'd be like twelve to fifteen peacocks just like going down the street. Wow. And there were all these. There were different murders. There were different flocks <laughs> around, and I'm like, oh my god! By the time we come back, there's just going to be peacocks everywhere. So, yeah. They'll be buying. They'll be taking out a loan for that one house yeah. on the corner. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they'll no, be we, owning everything. We, yeah, we figured it uh, out. We, we we're, get we're, out we're here, into man. microfinancing now. You know, it's it's a blockchain <laughs> thing. You yeah, understand. it's blockchain. Yeah, we don't even have. We obviously can't carry wallets, so, yeah, we, so. it's all on the. It's all it's, on the. Uh, it's part it's of the all on the internet. It's so the part of the feather trade. You know, we yeah. trade one big feather <laughs> for, you know, yeah. one one fourteenth of a crypto. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a you know group group buy in. Everyone's got it's a it's a yeah. DAO. It's you know yeah. de- decentralized autonomous organization. Yeah, Peacock, I mean, you probably wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah, you probably wouldn't get it. But yeah, but yeah, well, yeah, the wildlife keeps it keeps it wild. Keeps you on your yeah, toes. Yeah, man, I'm into um, it. 
I'm yep. here for it. I love it. Yep. So Nate Denver, um, I did not understand really what his job was. But so I was going to say, so I, you know, I knew him as a writer. I didn't know him, but I read his writing. I was a fan of his writing. I was a fan of his music. And then I think first time I really met him was when we reached out to him because we, he was on, a, you know, the the touring kind of like, you know, playlist or whatever. I don't know. We must have had, at that point, I think we probably had burned CDs of everything. I think it's kind of yeah. how it would work those early aughts kind of tours or mm-hmm. mid aughts, whatever. And so, um, you know, it would be, we'd have them on in the van. And so we, we did, we, we did a, uh, a single for the song eraser, which is kind of like the single from uh nouns, our first record on sub pop. And we did a seven inch single. And so we got to do B sides and we're like, Oh, it'd be fun if we did all like covers for the B sides, but it was, but the way the due date worked, we needed it to have them like done like now basically it was like yeah. you know yeah we knew well we need those like next week but we were in the middle of a i don't know a six week tour so we had to figure out like well what does that mean this was a, a tour we were doing opening up for the band liars in 2008 yeah. and so the nouns hadn't come out yet but we were on this on this national tour and uh and we were still designing the record cover with Brian Rodinger, our graphic design partner and friend. He he was doing merch for Liars. And so we were like in weird hotel rooms every night, like Motel 6s and, you know, Missoula, you know, designing record covers. But then at some point we were like, oh, well, we need B-sides. And so we just thought like, oh, what are the bands we're listening to in the car? Because we couldn't, we'd written everything. We'd, we didn't have any yeah. new songs. So like, well, let's do covers for the B-sides. And then we realized, well, we have to record them like now. So then I had like a little um, laptop with that with just garage band on it and yeah. virtual setup or anything and i think we got like a microphone of 58 and just recorded all the drums so we'd put on the song and i think dean would play the drums first and then i'd have the headphones on i'd listen to the song like we weren't listening to the like we were actually listening to the to the song we were covering and like yeah. recording our parts like that <laughs> <We're in garage laughs> that's band. amazing and like and i think we did the drums one night in a parking lot where it was snowing i think and so one of the songs we recorded was just stand still a, a nate denver a nate denver's next oh, that's song amazing. and so yeah. i think we did um uh um what is it um male masturbation that's a song uh not uh, 100 flowers no what is the the band before 100 flowers i don't know it's space anyway it was like a um, punk band from la and then uh there's one of them. I don't know. I should look all this up. I don't even remember. It was so long ago. But anyway, I know one of the songs was an eight Denver song. And so That's we recorded amazing. them in parking lots and in hotel rooms, <laughs> like very crudely. So just recording these things. And so I think we reached out to him because we were going to recover the song. Just ask if that was okay. Like we didn't know how, how that worked or what you're supposed to do yeah. to cover the song. And so um, uh, he was, he was super nice and very kind about it. And then I think we kind of stayed in touch since then as fans. So it was That's- mostly a, a fan relationship more than a friend friend relationship yeah yeah i mean but that's yeah. that's cool though like how how um yeah, how does it work with covers do you have to ask you don't have to ask right? no i think you just i you think just, you can just do it they, they get the yeah. certain percentage you, of the publishing you have to put down the publishing yeah whoever owns the yeah. publishing you have to write that down so you can't say yeah. you wrote it and um, then you get the performance you get like a performance piece whatever yeah that is. Or whatever the yeah Eraser song. Okay, hold on. There's a Wikipedia for this single. Let's see, oh, seven really? inch single. Yeah, features four tracks. Uh, Only one is an original song. Uh, oh, according to Pitchfork Media, the covers came about when the band were trapped in the car during a snowstorm for 14 hours. Oh. During that time, they taught themselves to play the songs. I don't think that's true, <laughs> but that sounds like a good, a good. Uh, keep it. A good, a good story we probably made up in an interview to yeah. Pitchfork. Uh, okay, so so Eraser is on the A side, then Don't Stand Still, Nate Denver's net cover, Male Masturbation, Urinals, the band Urinals, oh, okay. they later became Hundred Flowers cover, and then, oh, when you find out the nerves, you know the the, the band that did um, Hanging on the Telephone that Blondie covered. Oh yeah, that that was uh, the the band the Nerves, Paul Collins. Oh okay, and um, and they, they had a great song when you find out. So those are our three. B, uh, covers on the B side. Oh, that's awesome. Huh. Oh, and also in popular culture in 2017, the singles titular song Eraser appeared in the Canadian sitcom Letter Kenny as background oh. music for a bar fight in season four, episode one. Never work a day in your life. Huh. That's why you're rich. That I, d- I didn't realize this. You're right. <laughs> like, I forgot where that all that money came from. Yeah. No. I've, I don't think I've seen it either. I've heard it was good. So. I remember. <clears throat> anyway but yeah so we did that and then, okay. and then i remember when nate denver moved to la 
I think we, it was like, we were Instagram buddies at that point, you know, social media had, had happened. And so we were kept in touch and then I was like, Oh, you're here. And then I think I'd see him at like shows or art galleries or, you know, kind of skate music related things. But he was saying he was going to be, he was becoming a um, EMS, uh, like an ambulance worker. EMT. EMT. Yeah. EMT. What is EMS? That's something else. EMT. I don't know. Uh, and then I think, I think that's, as he just described it, I guess that's, that's one of the pathways to becoming a firefighter. It sounds yeah. very clandestine. Do you know any firefighters? Do you have? Yeah, I know a lot of firefighters. What's... There's a lot of firefighters up, up here. Okay. Yeah. Almost everyone's either a firefighter, a teacher or a nurse, or they work construction. <laughs> that's the service so industry that's, side those of things. Are kind yeah. of like the, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what's, no, what's your experience uh, yeah, a bunch with of the firefighters. Parents, I mean, they're like, I think people you want around if anything goes wrong, you got, I mean, that's the thing at all our soccer games, there's like, well, there's four firefighters, three EMTs and two nurses on the sidelines. So (laughs) so we're good. We're good. If any, if any kids are, yeah, but half the time they're just like, yeah, they're fine. It's, it's fine. guys. (laughs) This is not a big deal. (laughs) Just put some ice on it, rub a little dirt on it, give them an, an orange peel. They'll be fine. I know it's not the either, like scheduling wise. It's like it's a it's pretty rough because even up here, a lot of the um, firefighters don't. It's very much like um, I mean, not really like teaching. It's even more. It's probably more close to being a cop, whereas you get put one place and you don't really necessarily like you can apply for other. I think the way that it works is when you when you work at a station, you start at that station low, and then you have to build your way up at that station. Mm-hmm. And then if you ever leave that station to go somewhere else, I mean, unless you're probably at the top, but if you're if you're just like the the beginning firefighter, you have to start all over again. Wow. So then you have to go like if you work five years at a place and work your way up in the ranks if you get to another station i think you start back at the bottom and you have to work your way up so i think from what i've heard people don't leave their station often so you get like that which i guess makes sense because you don't want people popping around a lot because it is it is one of those things that you want to know and trust all the people that you're right next to the whole time and and, and, and also probably know- knowing those ranks and it's probably closer to the military, community. I guess. That's what I was going to say, yeah. too. Yeah, it sounds kind of akin to some kind of military formation. But also knowing the community in the area that you're servicing. If you got to right. drive your truck really fast to get somewhere, if, you, if you've right. lived or worked, or if you've worked in that same station for, you know, 10 plus years, you're going to know all the streets. You're going to know how to get to the area uh, fastest yeah. or whatever that is, or, or even who the yeah. people are in your city, in your community. Like, oh, okay, here, there's a fire at this house. Like I know that house. I know how to get there. I know who lives there and how many people are there having yeah. that kind of situational awareness. Dealt with those people you know. before dealt with yeah. that family before. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah, waiting, waiting for the call. Yeah. Those guys with the barbecuing and the fireworks, we knew that was the next one to go up. <laughs> or somebody, we know Kenny was going to go crazy yeah. again. This we haven't year. gotten a call yet, but somebody take the truck over there. Just, just yeah. cause we know yeah, we, just we, we drive by real quick. Just, yeah. Just do what it things <laughs> couldn't hurt to keep an eye on them a little closer this year yeah, yeah. i was surprised the last time because one of uh our our uh, friends up here there he's a firefighter and and uh he's way up now he's just maybe a captain but um in burbank and and uh and i was just asking these same questions like wait how does it work how many trucks do you have how many and there are so many less like a smaller number of vehicles than you think Hmm. are in each town Hmm. like Burbank had, I mean, it was like, I don't, I don't want to make up a number, but it was like a very small amount under fire trucks for all of however many, like mil, uh, like how many people are in Burbank? Probably like 300, 400,000, 500,000. I don't know. Sounds right. But it's like a big place. Yeah with a lot of people and, and the amount of like ambulances, I think it was ambulances he was talking about. And it was like, I mean, I don't want to make up a number, but, but it was small. like four. Huh. It was like What's four. What's the idea? Why, why is it because of funding? It's just, or just, funding. Because that's all you it's, it was just a lot of things. And so then like when big events happen, they have to work with the other fire departments in the area and they have I to see. like trade, trade vehicles back and forth and they have to try to find stuff. And, 
and he was just he was running me through a lot of that just kind of how that works and it was fascinating it was fascinating because i was like wow that's way less like if there's something really big that happened in a lot of places there there's a not a lot of help <laughs> not as much help as you think because you know you call 911 mm-hmm. and the fire truck shows up yeah almost always yeah and and um and I was surprised, but he was telling, yeah, he was just going over. He's like, well, you know, on average during these times of year, we have about this many problems and the issues and it pretty much stays the same. Like the amount of, the amount of issues and problems and, and the amount of cars that they need and ambulances and everything. It's, it's pretty predictable, which I was surprised at. It's like, it's a predictable, pretty predictable number. Hmm. Which, uh, but it was fascinating. He was just going through the logistics of a lot, like how all that stuff works. And I was like, okay, I need another beer. This seems, <laughs> this seems me out. Just here. This seems stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please tell me there's four more, four more ambulances <laughs> than you're talking about? Sure. Because even up here, you know, like I think he's, I think on our whole mountain, we have one, we have one ambulance, I think. Huh. Maybe. But then I think that's why you see the private, like there's private companies that, get hired out but then it's way more expensive and that they're yeah it's just the whole thing i love just the the logistics of the money and the production of the whole thing was like oh my god this is i never thought about how much kind of on on time or in time production there is in every single call oh i'm like well all our all our trucks are out so we got to call the company to get yeah Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, there's there's the one here in LA, the Ambulans or something, Ambu Amblands. <laughs> Amblands. <laughs> it like it says ambulance, like, but but there's like it's like missing some letters or something. It's like a private ambulance company. I remember oh, right. seeing I just, I've seen it in real life and I've seen people call it out on like, you know, hyper specific LA meme things. Like, oh, who's this guy? Like, what's the, How do you get that? Wait, job? what's the one? Americana memes or whatever? Yes, Is that, exactly. Do you follow that yes. one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Or Americana at brand. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. one of the best LA <laughs> hyper specific area, meme meme, meme yeah. shout out pages ever was that the Love americana it. yesterday it just makes it makes me laugh as we're going in there like oh yeah this is the place from the memes i love as it, having small kids the americana is the best place uh, hands down yeah i loved it it's like a disneyland well, with the we're, our kids are small enough or it was long ago enough where they used to let them run on the grass right Do they still have the grass all cut like it seems like it's now. gotten fancier. The less this, I have, I don't know. Last time I was there, maybe Christmas, and now you know whatever the, we went. But it's there's a there's a lot more high end um, stores and feelings yeah. happening there. So I don't it didn't seem as no like, more grass running. It wasn't a yeah, it wasn't a kids Damn. paradise. It was more of a rich person's paradise. We did look at a big dumb Tesla truck though. They have a Tesla like showroom there with like all the cars. Oh parked nice! In the, in the truck. One of the you know all yeah. those got recalled. No, last week. Really? Yeah, <laughs> for just being too cool. Break. Yeah, they were just like cool. super sweet, everyone, bro. Yeah, everyone crazy. driving these is uh, getting way too much attention. We got to shut this down. Uh, no, the brakes were going out on them, I think. Oh, God. Or something like the batteries were so heavy that the brakes were failing. I don't know what it was. You mean somehow allegedly. The, Sorry, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. I don't, we somehow don't need the, our, ugliest, uh, the ugliest truck ever made had, had a design <sighs> issue. There could yeah. actually be a design it's, issue in this. It's impossible. It's so huge. It's, it's designed. That truck is so huge. Too. I think that's I thought the it was thing. I was smaller. Thought it was smaller. Yep. Yeah. And then because we have, there's one of them driving around up here. I'm sure there and is. And then, um, and then well, I've seen a couple like going to Big Bear and stuff. And I'm like, that is just the. I don't know if it's bigger than a, like a Ford F250 or whatever. It's, it's probably bigger. Yeah. But for some reason that Cybertruck, because it looks the dumb shape that it is, it just looks <laughs> so it's like it's like a car that they forgot to design. There's like, well, here's the we body finish, that we we're we gonna work with. rendering it. You yeah, here's, render finish here's the you. original render. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do the chassis. Here's yeah. what the original here's the boxy shape that it's that 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 it can fit. Like so, let's render a truck inside of this shape, and they're like, "Nope, yeah. I would we're have to, done." Yeah, I would have to say that like, if this was if this was like an art piece, you know, done by someone other than Elon Musk with his with his 
whatever baggage, I yeah. probably would because I could find a way to appreciate this thing, and maybe even I do appreciate it now. But I think the social, it's like the you know, like not liking a band because of their fans. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. band might be fine, but the fans are just yeah. gonna drive me nuts. So I think there, there's an Elon Musk social quotient to this yeah. whole thing that just instantly like <laughs> is a high bar to, to hurdle. It's but like, the oof. actual design itself, it reminded me of something like um, like a bad like canon sci-fi film from like the eighties, you know, or something, or right. maybe even like you know whatever Terminator sort of thing, like like a like yeah. a set director or you know props person would build a car, you know, that's like the Cylons are like, attacking. Everybody jump into the to the GZ one thousand and everyone yeah. to get in there, and like, <laughs> it should have like a Gatling gun like mounted to the top of it, or laser pistols that are like yeah. come out of the side, or like those little like um blender spinny like you know wheels on the side of it <laughs> i think if it had more if it had more yeah. like robotic parts that moved around or if it's it, like, like something well, yeah whole thing went invisible or had like a wave of like blue tinted lights that like ran all over you could animate all over it I'd yeah. like, so it looked like it just got here from the future so every time you yeah. pulled up it's just like smoke machine blue lights <laughs> <laughs> like something yeah it's like something that sound. um it's like something that kit would fight Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. It would yeah. come out of the back of a car somewhere in the middle of the Mojave Desert running oh, in slow right. motion. Like out of a truck, <laughs> like as a truck is, as the yes. truck is going, like it would back out yep. and then be going on the freeway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Blue right. Thunder would have to come in, you know, the helicopter comes <laughs> swooping down <laughs> to fight it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Magnum P.I., would just dun, dun, him, dun, him, dun, him dun, and uh, dun, 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 they'd fly over and be like, oh, we, we got to go back to Hawaii where it's only Ferraris. Yeah, with uh, with this, TC. This is too futuristic. Yeah, yeah, this is way too futuristic for me. <laughs> uh, there's there's so many elements. Airwolf. That could have Where's Airwolf? Airwolf. Airwolf. That's what. Was Airwolf thinking. is like. Yeah, yeah. Airwolf. Was the, the Chinese show. have created a, an undestroyable car, undestructible car. We, really we must just, find a way yeah. to shoot rockets at it. Yeah, I need the EA or the, the AI uh, storyboards for this for this film. Oh my god! You know what I mean, just like somebody's. Okay, somebody you can thing. get that written pretty quick. Yeah, I've I've it's written it animated. Have that, I'm sure an AI guy has already had it, has it all done. Yeah, we we um, for one of my classes, uh, we had to we had to like write a storyboard, and the the story that we were working on was, um like uh like a it was like a puppet show but the puppets were using ai to so they didn't have to have human hands in them anymore so they were trying to figure out a way to make an ai hand without their puppet handlers knowing and so we put that in and i'm like well we should definitely if we're gonna go this route we should have ai write our (laughs) script yeah it's like a three minute script or whatever and so we punch that in and I'm like, and we get it. And I'm like, oh, it has jokes. Oh no. It, it's actually it good. It made jokes. It made me cry. I mean, it was like, I it laughed, was like, it was like if, uh, it was like the most obvious script that could be written about that yeah. was that. It was like the obvious part. So it was like, it had some little jokes in it. It had back and forths between like the puppets joking about their puppet masters and then the humans being concerned about the puppets. And I was like, we're done. We're we're in trouble. We're we're done. Although who cares? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, to that being said, to, 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 to say that like three quarters of the movies aren't written by some goofball, committee that is just going off of some some script writing like at minute number four you have to do this at minute number 10 you have to do this so this is just ai doing that and then faster cheaper all those people not getting paid oh my god yeah (laughs) so yeah yeah the goofballs are out of out of of a job the goofballs are out of a job i don't know i don't know if ai is writing anything good but it is writing things. Yeah. I don't know if people are writing anything good. <clears throat> I don't know. It depends. I agree. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'll, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a distraction of everyone going like, AI is going to steal all your jobs. You're like, no, 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 no. All our jobs already got stolen <laughs> by people. by real humans. <laughs> it's not the AI. It's the people who stole them, have been stealing them over and over again for years, or at least taking all the money and then, not paying a lot of it back. Right. right. That's the problem. Devaluing your product. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. AI is just one little, AI is one little thing. 
Let's look at how much they up, the are the upselling wound. groceries. AI is not yeah. upselling your groceries. Yeah, right. It's the salt in a wound and otherwise <clears throat> collapsing yeah. capitalist yeah. economy. Yeah. They yeah. found something to blame it on. No, 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 no. It's AI and computers. It's the it's email. Email is stealing your jobs because there does we don't have to mail letters anymore. So the look, guys, look yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> no. AI's fine. It's the cy- the cyber truck will save us from yeah. the AI. We, uh, yeah. we all get the cyber truck. We'll be saved. Remember when AI made our milk five dollars and fifty cents, Randy? <laughs> That was horrible. That sucked. Remember when Haley Joel Osment was AI and he like he like fell into an ocean and stayed at the bottom of the ocean for five thousand years till he was rescued by alien angels? No, and this is the movie what AI. The start oh, by Stanley Kubrick and finished by uh, by uh, Steven Spielberg. Right. Stanley like Kubrick Pinocchio. died before he could yeah. finish it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta go back and watch. <laughs> See, that. yeah, it's it's relevant now. The movie AI. <clears throat> All hey. right. We'll Did the idea. Simpsons write that? Randy? Yeah. The Simpsons? It was written, they written by Simpsons. They predicted this, right? Yes, they knew. They knew all of this. This would happen. When, Can, the, the Canyon Simpsons... Arrow. Remember the Canyon Arrow? The big the big SUV truck? It wasn't an electric truck, but it was the big dumb no. truck that the Simpsons predicted. I'm sure you could make a Tesla <laughs> cyber truck. Oh, my God. Of the Canyon Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go watch that. Okay, you find all out. Right. Okay. okay, all right. Well, I will see you uh, next week. Have a good one. We have another all great right. interview happening this Thursday. Follow Aaron Farley at Aaron Farley Photo on the Instagrams. Maybe? I think it's just just Aaron, at Aaron Farley. Farley at Aaron Farley. Okay. I got the Aaron Farley Photo one, but I gotta just I gotta put that one. To Don't follow that one. Go ahead yeah. and unfollow that one. We're actually yeah. unfollow that one. That one. Yeah. Report, yeah. That, Report one that one for, for spam. Yeah, and, to, <laughs> and for bears, too many bears. On yeah, that too many bears. Photos. Bears are hiding out. If you want good animal content and yes. uh, a meme every once in a while, follow Aaron Farley and Aaron Farley. There we go. Yeah. All right, we'll be back soon.